Um, so I'm going to continue with the discussion that we had in the morning by my colleagues on the effects of uh, different monetary policies on, on inflation. Uh, even though I'm going to concentrate on something Tim has already, uh, already sort of introduced, which is I'm going to focus on the effects of uh, monetary aggregates, in particular broad monetary aggregates, changes in the amount of money, <coughs> and whether those changes in the amount of money affect uh, uh, the inflationary output in the economy. I want to focus on, well, I should have said that indeed this is a, a joint paper uh, with my colleague uh, Oswald Islandejas from Universidad Francisco de Victoria in Madrid, and I'm uh, presenting it on our, on our behalf. So these are just a couple of quotes um, from the status quo and the, the profession, as Tim put it before. Uh, this is um, uh, uh, the chairman of the, of the US Federal Reserve, Powell saying back in February 2021 that the growth of M2, M2 is a broad definition of money in the, in the US, doesn't really have important implications for the economic out outlook. And it, it later in the year, in December, he said that the link between money and inflation ended about 40 years ago. So very much the, the leading figure uh, in, in the, the most important central bank in the world was very much dismissing the this relation that I'm going to talk about between the amount changes in the amount of money in the economy and inflation. And we have another, another quote here taken from the, the, a document, an official document by the European Central Bank. The European Central Bank, they reviewed the monetary policy strategy in 2021, and this is an official report that they published on the changes made to that strategy. So as they put it, um, um, there, has, there has been, a, the monetary analysis has shifted from its main role of detecting risks to price stability over medium to long-term horizons towards a stronger emphasis on providing information for assessing monetary policy transmission. And this is what I emphasized myself. This shift is focus, sorry, this shift in focus reflects a weakening of the empirical link between monetary aggregates and inflation. And I could bring a, a similar quotation as regards the views from the Bank of England. So, what I'm saying is that what I'm going to tell you now is not, it's not really mainstream. It's not what central banks perceive as the best uh, 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 um, framework to understand the effects of monetary policies on, on inflation. And I believe that, that's, that ju just that, that explains very much uh, why they did not uh, anticipate inflation back in 2020 or even 2021. So this is, a, if you like, a simplistic uh, uh, approximation to the quantity theory of money. Well, for some of you, uh, it may be the first time you, you see this uh, equation. This is the quantity equation. On the left hand side, you have m times v, m for the amount of money, times v for money velocity, equals p for prices times t for total transactions. Usually, we'll have to make some assumptions here uh, in order to make it uh, uh, more practical so we can use it for policy purposes. Usually, p um, it's not proxied by total prices in the economy, but just CPI prices. And as regards total transactions, we usually proxy it by uh, uh, the real GDP in the economy. As regards M, there's quite a, well, there's a, a huge controversy about uh, how to measure money, and I will leave that uh, for, for Tim to comment later on. Uh, we're going to use here a broad definition of money. In the case of the US, it's M3. It's a, a definition of money that includes cash in circulation, plus the vast majority of bank deposits, the liability side of the balance sheet of the banking system in the US. And then as regards V, and this is critical for this presentation, this is something that we focus on in this presentation, V is money velocity. Uh, typically how many times a, a monetary unit changes hands in a month or a year. That, this is the inverse of the demand for money. So the, the the higher money velocity is, the lower the amount for money will be. Mm -hmm. This is an identity exposed after the fact. But once you theorize about V, the demand for money, you can make it a theory as well. And you can use it for policy purposes. Mm -hmm. So if you take um, uh, logs and rates of change, you can uh, transform that equation up there into this one. So changes in the amount of money broadly defined, M3, plus changes in uh, v must be equal to changes in inflation plus changes in uh, real real output. So this is the supply of money, the demand for money, and this is nominal spending. Production times, uh, real production times uh, uh, prices. Hmm? 
Well, th there, are, there are quite many criticisms of the quantity theory of money, and in my opinion, also misconceptions. These are only three of them. Uh, the first one is one we're dealing with uh, uh, today in our paper, uh, is that uh, the quantity theory of money only works when V is fixed, when the demand for money doesn't change. The second one is that uh, the amount of money uh, in circulation should and can be, should be uh, uh, proxied by a narrow definition of money. In my opinion, this is a mistake. And second, quite many claim that unless those changes in the amount of money affect prices immediately, then the quantity theory of money doesn't, doesn't hold. Well, again, today I'm going to focus on uh, uh, criticism number one, but I will tell you that you need to use a broad definition of money for the equation to, to hold of the mean to term. And second, yes, it takes time. Uh, and that depends very much on, on, on the economy we're analyzing. But on average, over the mean to term, an excessive increase in the amount of money will be reflected in, uh, in inflation. Mm -hmm. It's not automatic. But again, I'm going to focus today on the behavior of V, money velocity, the demand for money. So these are the questions that um, we try to, to, to address in our paper. I'm going to summarize uh, for you today the presentation. Is the quantity theory of money, the equation that I presented to you before, a reliable framework or a theory to assess changes in consumer inflation? And we um, address this question to the US economy uh, in the last, uh, well, using a uh, hundred years uh, data. Hmm? In particular, we focus on two other uh, questions. Do changes in the supply of money, again, broadly defined, M3 in the US, and in money velocity affect inflation outcomes? And second, we very much study the behavior of money velocity, the amount of money, both in the minimum to long term and also along different phases uh, in the cycle. Hmm? Actually, I'm going to start with this now. How much, if it does, uh, 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 money velocity change changes uh, in uh, along the cycle? Mm -hmm. Well, say that uh, um, uh, money velocity doesn't change. Uh, in this case, well, you can take logs from this equation here and calculate variations of each of the components, and you can transform this uh, equation into changes in velocity must be equal to changes in nominal spending minus changes in, in the amount of money. If uh, um, money velocity is indeed fixed, and it doesn't change, so the rate of growth is zero, then every new addition of money, any change in money, will be followed by an equal change in nominal spending. This is a proportionality hypothesis. So say that, uh, just for simplicity, there is an increase in 10% in the amount of money, that would be followed by a 10% increase in nominal income. Of course, that's, uh, that's only explained if money velocity doesn't change. This is a strict application of the quantity theory of money. What I'm going to show you now is that it also works when money velocity changes. But now we're going to introduce a drift in that relationship. That's the average growth or fall in money velocity. So now you have the same expression as before. Changes in money velocity are going to be equal to changes in nominal uh, spending minus changes in the total amount of money broadly defined plus an average parameter here, mu. Hmm? That's the expression we're going to work on in this, in this paper. Hmm? So we're going to identify two periods, two scenarios in the economy. One of um, monetary equilibrium and another one of monetary disequilibrium. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use the deviations of changes in money velocity from its mean as an indicator of monetary disequilibrium. The greater this deviation of money velocity from its mean, well, the, the, the greater will be the distance from a monetary equilibrium scenario. Okay? That's how we identify these two scenarios. <coughs> Then we use US data, as I said before, uh, 100 years of, of data, broad money, and nominal income to behave the long-term behavior of money velocity. And we just calculated the average of money velocity in the last 100 years, including the COVID uh, uh, episode years. Uh, the average uh, of money velocity is minus 0.8%. If you exclude uh, mm. the last two years, it's minus 0.6%. So indeed, there is a negative 
average. Indeed, uh, money velocity changes uh, uh, on the medium to long term using a 100 year uh, sample. Um, are those changes stationary? Do that's the, 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 the mean, that's the, sorry, that's the, the money velocity changes series. Uh, does it uh, revert to the average? We conducted the conventional statistical uh, uh, test for that, the augmented uh, Dickey Fuller test, and we um, uh, uh, show in the paper but that indeed the, uh, changes in money velocity are stationary, are mean reverted, which means that a period of a systematic fall in money velocity will very likely be followed by a period of recovery in money velocity. Hmm? Over time, the series will fluctuate around that average. Hmm? That's a mean reverting behavior for, for money velocity. Hmm? This is the diagram, I hope you can see it properly from the back, uh, with the um, components of the funny that I showed you before. So, uh, the blue line is for the growth of nominal GDP or nominal spending, that's the right hand side of the equation. And then the orange line is for uh, the rate of growth of broad money and money velocity growth or changes are here uh, in the blue line, in, sorry, in the green line. So let's concentrate on, on money velocity changes, the green line. Well, as you can tell, there was quite a lot of volatility uh, in the first half of the 20th century, up to, yes, 1955 approximately. Then it has become much more stable, but indeed it does change. It does change. What you can say, what you can see, sorry, is that it doesn't have a systematic behavior above or below the average. It does indeed revert to the average. Mm -hmm. So let's just take the example of the COVID-19 uh, years. There was a huge uh, fall in the in money velocity, and what you would expect from a mean revert in that series is to return as it did to the pre-crisis level. So even in such a dramatic episode of, the, uh, of 2020 to 2021, uh, money velocity displayed this uh, mean reverting behavior that I referred to before. Mm -hmm. Well, I forgot to say that here we used the NDER, the National Bureau of Economic uh, Research in the, in the US, uh, to date uh, recession episodes in the US. So whenever you see this gray areas is recession episodes in the US. And in most of those recession episodes, you can observe a, 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 a fall in money velocity. Well, in order to uh, identify not just the long-term behavior of the series, that as I said is mean reverting, but also the behavior of money velocity uh, during the cycle, different phases in the cycle, we use a regime switching model in order to try, again, to, to identify the behavior of money velocity during expansions and recessions. Do they display uh, a, a pattern that we can identify in the model? That's exactly what we did here. Hmm? So this is the, the model that we estimated. So changes in money velocity on the left-hand side of the equation. And then we added a dummy uh, variable for recessions. And two, the model identified two um, regimes, two SA variables. One S S zero for a decline in money velocity, and one for S one for an increase in money velocity. So as you can tell, in periods of a recession, an ordinary uh, and, sorry, and a fall in money velocity, uh, you have a minus eight point six percent value for, for money velocity. It's quite a, a deviation from the from the mean that I told you before. Mm -hmm. Whereas in periods of uh, expansion or no recession um, and positive velocity, velocity growth, you have quite uh, a, a, an increase in money velocity as well, very far from the average. These are the two periods, the two extreme variables for money velocity growth or decline that we can identify to mo with monetary disequilibrium. They are very far from the average that I, that I referred to before. The vast majority of uh, cases, according to the U.S. Uh, recent history, is that of negative velocity growth during times of expansion. That's 60% of the time. Hmm? But again, following the, the definition that I used before, those extreme values, money velocity changes, 
can be considered as those far from monetary equilibrium. So, for example, either potential disinflationary uh, periods, those when there is a recession and negative uh, velocity uh, growth, those have a decrease in velocity, an average of minus 8.6%. And we have other periods of potential inflationary uh, episodes when there is an expansion and positive velocity growth, with an average increase in velocity of 6.33%. So whenever we see these massive deviations from the average, those are periods of uh, disequilibrium that could be either inflationary or deflationary. But here you have uh, those periods. So recession and negative velocity growth, that's the orange uh, uh, bars, and expansions and positive velocity growth, that's for the green, the green bars. And we dated those periods as well. Well, uh, I'm very happy to circulate the paper for, for details. But just for brevity, I'm not going to thank you to, to detail these periods. The next thing we did is to test the relationship between money growth and CPI inflation in the, in the US. And again, we uh, consider a regime uh, switching model uh, for that. And in particular, we estimated a model in which we tested for non-linear responses of inflation to changes in the amount of money. And we did it by taking into consideration different um, values for money velocity. So basically we are using here money velocity and a non-linear response of uh, inflation to changes in, in the amount of money in order to anticipate inflation for the US. Hmm? Well, I'm sorry for the long one here, <laughs> the question up there, that's the one we estimated which means that um, changes in inflation can be explained by changes in the amount of money in the economy in the previous two periods, yeah, M2, M, T minus one and T minus two, and also by changes in money velocity in the previous two periods. The model identified two, again, two regimes here, one of high uh, sensitivity of uh, inflation to changes in, in the amount of money, that's S, S uh, equals uh, uh, 1 and S equals 0 for an ordinary sensitivity of inflation to changes in the amount of money. And as you can tell here in the model, so they have to be very brief, um, this is actual inflation, the blue line, recorded inflation, and this is fitted inflation according to our model, that's the orange, the orange line. Well, the model explains well the last, the behavior of prices in the last two prices. So no, no inflation in 2020, but indeed inflation in 2021 and 2022. This inflation and even deflation in the US uh, in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. And these two periods of uh, greater moderation, greater macro stability uh, up to the global financial crisis and in between the last, in between, sorry, the last two crises. So the policy implications of our uh, research uh, point out, uh, suggesting at least, that uh, central banks to consider both changes in the, in the amount of money, broadly defined, and changes in money velocity in order to, to, to make uh, inflation, inflation projections, in order to make uh, monetary policy decisions. Thank you very much.